Okay, today we're going to be talking about another uh, topic with um, shear stresses and beams. In particular, we're going to be talking now about what happens with shear stresses when we're thinking about circular cross sections. So we're going to do a circular cross sections. So if you recall the way that the shear stress and beam bending was developed, one of the key assumptions was that the rectangular, that the uh, cross section was rectangular. And so the question is, is, is there any part of the equation tau equal to VQ over IB that we can leverage if the cross section looks like this? circular cross-section radius r. Because clearly, if this is the neutral axis of the beam, the geometry is going to impact the shear stresses. It's unlikely, in fact, it's not true, that the shear stresses look like that near the surface. They do not look like that. In fact, they kind of run like this until you get to the neutral axis. And at the neutral axis, is where they become perpendicular to the axis. And so for circular cross sections, you can apply this formula only at the neutral axis. So that's the key takeaway, only at the neutral axis. And that's quite nice actually, because the maximum shear stress so the max tau is in fact at the neutral axis as well. So even though you can't look at the shear stresses in other parts of the cross section, you can still get a feel for the maximum shear stresses using the equation that we derived for rectangular cross sections. Okay, so if we, we can make some simplifications now. If we know that the cross section is rectangular, then we know that uh, the moment of inertia with respect to the z-axis for a rectangular cross-section is just pi r to the fourth over four. Q, which is going to be equal to the, um, we're going to measure the Q above the neutral axis, which is just a y bar is equal to pi r squared over two, and then y bar is four r over three pi. So you can look these things up in the back of the book. And so that equals two r cubed over three. Okay. And then b, so we've got i, here's i, we've got q, and then we have uh, that B is nothing more than the diameter, just two times the radius. So there we've got that. Okay, so if we take these equations, specialized to a circular cross-section, and plug them into this VQ over IV equation, and simplify, we end up with this particular equation that's only applicable to circular cross-sections where we're measuring at the neutral axis. 4b over 3a. All right, so that's it for this particular concept. That's the only important piece of information that we need to that we need to remember. Okay, so let's move on to a closely related concept. Let's now ask the question: What are the shear stresses? So we want to measure the shear stresses. Um, but now in the webs of beams with flanges. So this is another special case. Okay, so let's say we have an I beam. It's a classic example. So what we're going to say is that we're we just interested in the shear stresses in the web. 
Up here, there are shear stresses, but they're very, very small compared to the bending moments. And so we're going to ignore them for now. We're going to look at the shear stresses here. And what we'll find in a moment is that the shear stress distribution in the web looks something like this, where tau max is here. Okay, so let's, so basically we're going to take this equation, tau equals VQ over IB, and we're going to use it as is, but just in this section here. Right, so, if the, so if this is the neutral axis, and we wanted to know, for example, tau at some distance y, let's say right through here, then this would be just from statics, the shear strip, the shear force. This is the entire cross section, i for the entire cross section. B here becomes just the thickness, and then so Q is really the only complicated thing. In this case, Q is just going to be this area, maybe we can use a different color. Okay, so it's going to be, Q is going to correspond to that area. Oh, excuse me, that's wrong. Let me erase that. Q is going to actually be above where we're right there. Okay. Okay, so that's really it. So um, this is, in some sense, really very quite, really not much different than what we've done in the past. Um, and so, in summary, during this uh, lecture, we we're using this formula, tau equals VQIB, and we're noticing that for several different cross sections, in this case the circular cross section and webs in the webs of beams with flanges, we can apply this thing as is in order to get a good idea of what the shear stresses are in those locations.